Good morning everyone and welcome back to Cram Farms. It has been an extremely interesting past 60 hours now. Um, we've been dealing with a down mama cow and we've been having to bottle feed this baby calf um, because mama is down. <clears throat> so let me take you back to everything was going great. So if you remember, uh, Buttercup gave birth to her calf, Millie, on Tuesday morning, really early. And milk fever, you know, we were had a heads up for that because she had it last time. And just because she had it last time doesn't mean she was going to have it again. But we were prepared. We had our calcium on hand. Um, we gave that after birth. And we were prepared. Had an extra one on hand if we needed it again later. Well, on Thursday night thanksgiving night um we came out and buttercup was down um we could not get her up so we immediately thought about milk fever um we already had a tube of that calcium um and we had a tube of phosphorus and magnesium on hand and because of that uh, we went ahead and gave that to her just because we suspected milk fever maybe um since she had had it in the past well we got that in her and she did get up within about 15 to 20 minutes um but she was really weak you could tell and something just wasn't right we started looking at bell oh, no this isn't bell anymore millie we started looking at millie and could tell that she really wasn't getting any milk um from buttercup her teats were very um like deflated and buttercup just wasn't herself so after talking to the vet we started exploring a few different options and came to the conclusion that she has something called a blown quarter which is where mastitis has gotten into the bloodstream and um makes her i mean sick so with mama being down and honestly no milk there we have had to be to bottle feed millie hey millie girl now you can imagine that the first bottle we went to give her didn't go nearly as smoothly um, but by her second and third she is now generally ready for this bottle she sees this bottle now and comes now how do we know that she wasn't getting milk well there's a few ways um, when she was nursing well first of all the teats were like deflated all together we also could tell because um, I even tried milking out some teats and wasn't getting anything and then if you'll notice while she's drinking the bottle here this little um, tail will start to wagon it means she is happy and getting her milk and we couldn't see any of that when she was nursing on mama now you might be wondering about colostrum um, she did um, get the colostrum from buttercup in the first uh, 24 to 36 hours even <clears throat> um, we saw her getting that. Um, we paid really close attention to make sure she was immediately nursing. Her tail was wagging then. And of course, now that I said that, she's not going to wag her tail while she's drinking this bottle. But, um, so we know that she did get the colostrum. It's the milk that's been the problem now. So let's get her bottle fed and then we'll talk to you a little bit more about Buttercup. It's like, I know. It's like you forget where it is. Come. He's a good girl, Millie. He's a good girl. She thinks you're the udder. <laughs> That's how they hit the udder on the mama. They want that milk. Good job, Buttercup. Oh, good girl. You can get up this morning. So I'll let you see her for a minute. She has been very wobbly, not steady on her feet. Um, 
last night even. <clears throat> She's not doing great with eating. Um, we've been pushing the alfalfa, giving her some grain, water. How are you feeling this morning, girl? How are you feeling, girl? I need to try to milk that teat out again. Well, that's a good sign. Peeing is good. I mean, she's getting some water. Um, we also know the level we left her water um, at last night. So we'll check that and see how much water she drank overnight. We will go ahead and start getting her. Hey, girl. If she has mastitis, why are we not using antibiotics to treat her? Well, <clears throat> The vet came out to see her. We talked about the mastitis. And what he said is, if for a cow and this type of mastitis, antibiotics aren't gonna work. <clears throat> because essentially, the bacteria that infected this quarter, um, so sometime probably shortly after birth, um, her body has already gotten rid of that bacteria. It's already like cleared it of its system. What's causing her the trouble is the fact that just like in humans, all the white blood cells go there to try and attack that um, bacteria. You know, they kind of like basic biology, they go back, the um, white blood cells encase the bacteria and then they like explode, killing off um, the bad bacteria. Well, what's left in her system is those toxins from fighting off this bacteria. Um, she is now has all that inflammation left in there and that is what's bothering her. So, yes, she does look skinny. Um, we actually haven't seen her look this skinny um, in the past, but we truly believe that's because she's not eating. Um, like talking with the vet yesterday, he came and just gave her some IVs of electrolytes to hopefully get her um, thirsty and get her back up and moving and wanting to eat. And we've been giving her some extra grain um, her alfalfa hay and we have seen her put her nose to the ground a few times to try to eat some grass so she is starting to eat some and so her body condition will come up um, as she does that now mama cows need a lot more to eat because they are well, not a lot more but they need more to eat especially when they are in milk because they're making milk for the baby um, now the baby will keep trying to come over here and nurse which the vet said was completely fine let her do that it could help buttercup bring that milk in um, a little bit better Ooh, my camera went out of focus. It could help her to bring her milk in a little bit better um, by just allowing the baby to keep nursing. Even though she's not, even though she's not getting anything, allowing her to keep trying to nurse might bring that um, milk in better. And what you essentially want to do is be able to strip all that nasty milk out of that udder um, because, so that it will stop bothering her. Um, the bad part is you don't want it getting into the bloodstream which is um, this type of, it's called a busted quarter or another word the vet used was watery mastitis. Um, I'm gonna try to milk that quarter out in just a little bit, but it is very, very, it has an awful smell and it's very rust colored. So um, yeah, almost like a tomato juicy yuck. So all of her other quarters so far seem okay. They are not hard and um, the color looks good on them. Uh, the calf is just not getting a lot and the vet said that's completely normal That with this type of mastitis um, She may her milk may dry off um, Because of it. So even if we get her better um, We may not have milk from her so that just leads us to the point of what do we do and We haven't come up with that answer yet so Millie has almost finished her bottle. Uh, the vet told us yesterday to give her one quart of milk four times a day um, for the first few days. So we'll do that. We probably will break it off into three feeds after that and eventually she'll get to two feeds a day. Because Buttercup, um, her milk is drying up because of this infection, we don't have milk to give the calf. And so we could um, buy a milk replacer. Uh, it is expensive. And yesterday we actually had a family um, offer us some of their extra milk from their Jersey cow. So that is actually what Millie is able to drink right now. That's what we are bottle feeding her is some milk from another Jersey cow at another farm who is actually in milk right now. So the homesteading community has been 
wonderful. Um, we're constantly learning from them and meeting other friends and people that are like-minded um, as us with our animals. And we're just so thankful that they offered Millie this extra milk because now she's getting good milk instead of us having to buy a costly um, calf milk replacer. So I want to say a big thank you to that family. Um, we really, really, really appreciate it. Mama just took a bite over there. I don't know if you can see it. But she just started chewing. Took some grass off the ground there. These are all good signs. Good job, Mama. So we're really just trying not to stress her out too much. But if you look right back in here, this is the quarter, this front quarter, um, that is infected. And it is just really, really hard. Um, huge and swollen. Um, it has not been red, it's just the hardness from it. You done with your bottle, Millie girl? Come see mama. Hey, Millie. So that we are keeping mama and baby still together. Um, and you'll see she goes to trying to she goes to trying to milk I mean trying to nurse and she's not on that front quarter she's on that back quarter um, and so the vet said let her try it see if she can get anything in you'll see her hit the bag normally a few times um, but she's just not getting much Ew, don't don't get that yucky milk girl no all right let's see if I can get anything off of this you want to hold her and let me see if I can get <sighs> okay, so it's very clotty. Mm, I can smell it. Yeah, the smell is awful. Oh, don't, no, not that milk. Mm -mm. Go to the front teat. Okay. Back teat. Don't go to that one. Yucky. Well, she's pooping, so that's good. I did use some, um, I need to do that last infusion this morning too. You know, I did use some, um, uh, we have some all natural, like broad spectrum. Um, it's called XL 7000. Um, it's a product that we have found that is um, all natural and you can actually infuse it into the teats when they have like a and if they have like a mastitis infection and so we did do that it's usually three doses um after you strip the quarter out really well so i have done that twice now i'm going to give her one more dose this morning she drank she drank a little bit not much so we filled this to the tip top edge um last night and you can see she did not drink much at all better cut we're gonna get her some more grain, see if we can get her to get some grain in this morning. And let me see now if I can just milk off and show you the color of this nastiness. I got a bunch of clots on it first. Oh, that's good. But I'm not getting... Well, you can't see a lot. Oh, the smell is awful. So this is the color. It's like tomato juice. Ugh, of what's coming out of that teat. The smell is awful. Once you milk off that teat, you don't really want to touch another teat um, because you don't want to transfer infection. So here is the hand I use so that I will not touch her again. So we are going to let mama um, and baby B keep them together as long as we can. The vet's prediction was a 50-50 chance of Buttercup making it. So we don't know. We are just taking it kind of a day at a time. Going by her signs, if we need to give her more, some more um, just IV electrolytes for fluids, um, we'll do that. Um, and hoping that we can just get this mastitis to clear on through. Um, Buttercup has always been my favorite cow here, or my favorite even animal on the homestead. Um, and she provides us so much more than just milk. So it is um, a tough decision. It's been a hard few days, um, but we are trying to take care of Millie the best we can so that we can keep her healthy and well as well. So if you've ever had experience with a blown quarter or um, a cow that had a really bad mastitis infection, and I'll look there, she is eating, so that's promising, the vet said. Um, leave us some comments below. 
Let us know if you've ever had experience with this and how it turned out for you. Um, but that's about it. I will try to keep you updated and posted on Miss Buttercup. Don't forget you can always follow us on Facebook and Instagram um, as well as our YouTube channel. Um, give us a thumbs up if you haven't already and please hit the subscribe button. We'd love for you to share our channel with all your friends as well um, just so we can continue gaining subscribers. Thank you again so much for following our journey and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.